everyone. Um, thank you for coming today. Um, you may remember from my last presentation, I talked about um, how to increase your mineral cons consumption through your diet. Um, but today, many people feel like their diet alone doesn't provide all the vitamins and minerals that they need. So they may turn to vitamin and mineral supplements. So today, I'm going to talk about if that is a good idea for the average healthy individual. And I'm also going to talk about life stages when maybe it is a good idea. And then we're going to watch a video and discuss that. So <laughs> on the market today, there are many options. Um, there's Nature Made brand. Um, there's Costco brand. Uh, they even have children's vitamins that are marketed specifically to them. So when you go to the store, there are many vitamin and mineral options. Um, and people just, since they see it all over, they think it's, you know, safe and healthy and they just want to buy it so that they can improve their health. But is that a good idea? Well first let's talk about what they contain. So they usually contain um, different kinds of vitamins and as you may or may not know um, there's two different types of vitamins. There's water soluble vitamins and uh, fat soluble vitamins. So water soluble vitamins are vitamins that are not as readily stored in the body and if you know you take a lot of it there is chance for some toxicity with some water soluble vitamins, but um, it's not really an issue. Um, but with fat soluble vitamins, they are readily stored in the body. So if you take a lot of them, it's really easy to get toxic symptoms um, if you take a lot. And with minerals, um, they act similar to both water soluble and fat soluble vitamins. Um, some uh, some uh, minerals do act like water soluble vitamins and they're easily excreted, but then some are stored and then they can cause toxicity as well. So now I'm going to talk about when supplements may be beneficial in your life. So when you have a um, deficiency such as iron deficiency anemia, um, it may be a good idea to take a supplement. Um, as we talked about in my uh, presentation on iron, um, you can get really affected by iron deficiency anemia your, your energy goes low so you need to increase your iron to help you to function better in your life um, also if you're pregnant um, you have the growing fetus so you may need supplementation to help with the nutrition of that baby um, then also African Americans they have darker skin so they may need a supplement for vitamin D so that they can um, be healthy and then also older adults they um, sometimes have problems with absorbing um, vitamins such as vitamin B12, so they may need to go to their doctor to get supplements to help them in that. So supplements also can cause problems though. Um, if you exceed the upper limit, which is not a goal for um, to meet for supplements or to meet for vitamins and minerals, but it's to tell you that you shouldn't cross this line. So, you know, there are recommendations for the amounts of vitamins and minerals that we need to consume, but the upper limit is like the line where you shouldn't cross because if you cross that line, then you could get into toxicity. And toxicity can be you know, a range of uh, health problems that um, come from taking too many vitamins and minerals. Um, and I was gonna put up pictures of some of the toxicity symptoms, but they were really scary looking. It was like horror movies, so <laughs> I didn't want to scare you guys, but it is an issue if you're, especially if you're taking uh, fat soluble vitamins. Um, and then also if you have a pre-existing condition such as hemochromatosis, that is where um, it, it affects one in 250 um, people of European descent and they, have a condition where they their body readily absorbs iron. So if you take a iron supplement and you have hemochromatosis, your body's just gonna take that iron and it's it's gonna go into <coughs> iron overload and the iron is stored in your um, in your organs and that can cause problems. So if you are of European descent, you want to be aware of that that you shouldn't just readily take a um, an iron supplement. So now we're gonna watch the Good Morning America interview that I have, and we'll discuss that after. Your health alert about vitamins. Millions of us, of course, take them every day to try and stay healthy, but could they actually be doing us harm? There's a big new study that says some dietary supplements do little good and could even 
raise the risk of death in older women. Dr. Richard Besser joins us with much more on this. Rich, of course, this industry is, what, $11 billion a year That's right. here in the U.S. So over half of Americans take these types of supplements. So tell us a little bit more about, the, a lot more about this right. study. You know, people are going to hear this and they're going to be very concerned. So let me lay it out. This was a very large study. Nearly 40,000 women participated. The average age of the women was, was 62. And they followed them for 19 years. And they looked to see, could vitamins or supplements increase or decrease the risk of death. And there were big findings that came out of this. The big ones were this. If you took a multivitamin, your risk of dying went up 2.4%. If you were taking iron, it went up 3.9%. On the positive side, if you were taking calcium, your risk of dying over that 19 years went down by 3.8%. They, of course, had to bring in other factors. Uh, if you were a smoker, overweight, your diet, and things like that. Well, you know, that's one of the things about it. These kind of studies will raise more questions than they answer. They didn't tell half the women, oh, you need to take a vitamin, and half you, you don't need to take a vitamin. So it doesn't say why they took them. And sometimes when people are getting sick, they'll take a vitamin, mm-hmm. or they'll take iron to try and improve their health. And so it doesn't, it doesn't factor that out. But it still raises some questions, because there are other studies that have found similar findings. Of course, the Council on Response nutrition weighed in and they said about the study it is important to keep in mind that this is an associative not cause and effect what you're talking about study it uh, certainly does not warrant sweeping overstated concerns for elderly women and I, I would agree with them hundred percent you know this is something that, that raises questions but I think if you're taking a vitamin now I wouldn't stop taking it because of this but I would start paying attention to some of the other information that's out there for most people you're gonna get enough vitamins through your regular diet and we know it's bad to be deficient in vitamins, but it's also saying it may be bad to be taking too many. And we should point out in the study, which you you did, 40,000 women, they were all white, average age 62. So what does it mean for other groups, for younger women, men, all across the board? Pregnant women need to be taking their pregnancy vitamin and their folate. Breastfed children need to be taking their vitamin D. We need to make sure we're all getting enough vitamin D. But what it's saying is that health doesn't come from taking a pill. You, You know, you have to have that balance site, you have to do those things. And if you do, you're going to be fine, even if you don't get all your vitamins every day. I said raise some very important questions. That's all right, Rich, thanks. Okay. So, now that we've watched that, I just kind of want to get a feel for what everybody thinks after we've considered the information about the possible pros and cons of vitamin and mineral supplements. Um, can someone tell me why or why not they will continue to take vitamin and mineral supplements in the future? Not for me. I can't, I can't drink milk. I hate milk, so I have to take vitamins in order to get my vitamin D and, you know, everything that milk would give me, I have to find another way to take it, so I usually do a multivitamin. But when they're saying it's harmful to your health, how do you know how much is too much and how do you know, you know, what you should be taking for your own personal body? Yeah. Anyone else? I'm indoors a lot and I'm fairly dark skinned, so I, I will continue to take vitamin D. Okay. <laughs> um, I eat a lot of crap and I'm attached to metabolism, attached with metabolism right now, so I'm gonna do it until it slows down, but I wanna get the uh, right nutrients I need, so I'm gonna continue to take the most Okay. Well, the take home message that I want everyone to take home is that um, you should take your vitamins and minerals yeah. with care. Uh, you wanna consult your doctor, like the doctor was saying, because you know if you're in one of those life stages, such as if you're pregnant or if you have a vitamin deficiency, it may be a good idea to start a supplement, but only after your doctor has advised you to do so. Um, but if you're a healthy individual, you might want to think twice and just maybe try to make dietary changes because usually a diet that's rich in um, many foods can supply the vitamins and minerals that you need, but ultimately you should uh, sit down and think about uh, whether you should take a vitamin and mineral supplement. So um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out today and um, thank you for also attending my other presentations. I hope that this uh, has given you some things to think about in terms of vitamin and mineral supplements and um, I hope you guys have a great day.